So here we are. Welcome to the first stream of the Wilders game. And uh, we're going to do the clacker. Here we go. One clack. This is the reality is the reality is this is session a hundred and something probably yeah. this is our first live session we've been playing this game for about two years now and uh we're gonna go around the table and everybody's gonna do a quick just introduction of themselves so why don't we start with you the uh, person on my left mr glenn lavalley go ahead yes i'm glenn lavalley and i play uh, Raven Alexium, also known as Xavier Mullane in my old world. And I'm a wizard. You want more? Oh, no, I think we're on to a, go ahead. We'll go on to the next person, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I play the sharpshooter, Josephine Smith. Pew, pew. Hi, my name is Janice, and I am playing the role of Lavinia Rose, who is a fortune teller. And I'm Rob Woodbury, and I'm playing Percy Redfeather. I'm a ranger, and uh, now I guess I'm a weir tiger. <laughs> As of last session. Hello, I'm Ian Little, and I am playing the part of Thaddeus Poindexter of the Williamsburg Poindexters. What I do for business is nobody else's business but mine. <laughs> okay, so we are going to try, if everybody can remember what time it is, we're going to try and just do about a 20-minute video, and we're going to do a review. Because everybody who may be uh, catching up with us and watching us doesn't know the beginning of the story, we're just going to spend 20 minutes doing that, then we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back and start the game for tonight. So, uh... Review. We're going to go all the way back, almost two years ago, Session Zero. The first thing I did when we were starting this game, this is actually our second campaign. We had one five years ago, maybe, that we started. Anyways, second campaign. At the beginning, everybody who was going to play, I asked you what class you want to be, right? And... Uh, Glenn wanted to be a wizard. Amanda decided she wanted to be a ranger. Janice decided she wanted to be a cleric. Rob decided he wanted to be a ranger as well. That's his favorite class. And uh, Ian was very pragmatic and looked at all of the other classes and wanted to be something that wasn't any of them. Also, it was something you'd never done before, right? Yes. I said, what's left over? What do you need? I'll right. do that. And so you're a rogue. How yeah. do you feel about being a rogue? I love it. Yeah? <laughs> you know, the thing was, at the beginning, you guys all made those classes, and then I told you that uh, you can't be those classes. Do you remember that? Yep, I remember that day. And instead of those classes, and also you all had to be humans, because it was actually the year 1899, and you were in the Old West, and you were not a wizard you are not a ranger not a cleric what did i give you glenn what class do you remember what i, I think you? i was a beer maker a beer a, maker a brewster yes <laughs> <laughs> which was nice but uh you know turned me into a gunslinger eventually or a you know a wanted Didn't, criminal weren't you an inventor of sorts oh yeah that's yeah too. Uh, sorry i'm going too many episodes back yeah yes. well you do have a backstory and it is on our website. Yes, it is. We have a website, wildermage.com. And um, speaking of backstories, uh, Josephine Smith has got a backstory. What hmm. was yours? Yes, well, um, I grew up very, very poor. Very poor. Um, I was the youngest of so, or sorry, second youngest of several children. My father was in his 60s when, uh, when he had me, and he died not long after. And um, in, order to, in order to keep me alive, my mom basically sold me to, um, to uh, be a servant for these terrible people. Um, but... 
one thing that I did learn while I was servant to these really awful people is how to shoot. And I was really good at it. Um, and as soon as I was able, I joined a traveling road show and uh, put on the show the, with the guns and um, and I became very famous. But and I did. I ended up falling in love and having. I got married, had a little girl. But unfortunately, we were in a tragic accident, a train accident, and my husband and my child both passed. So I vowed revenge on the on the. Uh, right, oh, on the railway company, the railroad company, because of the turmoil that I've had to go through, and it's all their faults. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you were up for a train robbery, is that right? I was very much ready to to stick it to the man. I think in the bio that we've got on your on the website for you that was all written up. Um, you were like the lookout and like the long distance sharpshooter. Yes. Take him down from a distance. That, that was my Although role. Although when we the play the game now, now right? you tend to prefer to be up close and personal and stick a gun in their face and shoot them. <gasps> right, Percy? Point blank range. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a little powder mark from a little accident. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Right in the face. <laughs> okay, why don't we move over to Lavinia and... Um, you can just tell us briefly what was your backstory or what was Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I was raised in a nunnery. I guess you would call it a nunnery. You would call it a school for girls, actually. Loretto School for Girls Loretto, in Santa Fe. Yes, Loretto School for Girls. I was delivered to their front door in a basket as a baby. And um, it was a strange basket because it was quite tall and it seemed to have stuff in it but nobody really knew what it was anyways as a little girl i could always hear my grandmother in my head as i slept she'd come to me in my sleep she'd tell me stories she'd tell me directions things i should do and so i quickly learned that i could tell things about people for an example, a woman came into the um, school, and I, I looked at her, and I just said to one of the nuns, oh, she's going to have a baby, it's going to be a boy, and it's going to die the day after. Well, that didn't go over so well with the nuns, and I got shut away for a while. So did you stick around long at that place? I did not. I think I was about 15 or 16 that I was asleep. And Abuela, Grandma, came to me in my sleep and said, It is time for you to leave this place now. Now, yeah. what I didn't realize, I guess, is that they had arranged for one of the members of um, their organization to come and see if they could do some sort of treatment on me. I don't know what that was. I didn't stick around to find out. So you mentioned your grandma. Wait a minute. Your grandma, Abuela Nala? Absolutely. Yeah, but she's not alive. Well, you know, some of my best friends were dead at that, that time. I used to love to just kind of go and hang out in the graveyard because it was quiet and nobody bugged me there. Yeah, that's not creepy at all. No. So, um, you still talk to your grandmother then? And would you like to meet her? I'm not sure I did that. Oh. This would be Grandma. Oh. Abuela Mala. So you carry around your grandmother's skull. I know. Different strokes, different folks. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good enough. And so then you went and joined the carnival and you became a fortune teller. I did. I met some very kind people who took, them, took me under their wing and taught me all the things I know now. And it kept me alive and happy, and I met a lot of wonderful people that way. All right. So, once again, your bio is on uh, the website. Uh, let's move over to Rob, who is Percy Redfeather. All right. So, my father uh, 
Mr. Bridger was quite famous in the West. The mountain man, Bridger? The mountain Jim man, Bridger. Bridger. Yeah, yeah. He was a very famous mountain man. And uh, he uh, had much dealings with the Shoshone uh, tribe. And as a result, when he was with them for an extended period of time, he fell in love with and uh, married my mother, I guess. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, the chief's what, daughter, the chief's daughter, no less. So there was some issue with that, but he seemed to approve himself. And I grew up with the Shoshone tribe because my father went off to explore more mountains and do more wondrous things in his life. And uh, growing up in the Shoshone tribe, I felt a little different because I was from English stock and Shoshone put together, but there was also a mystery in my family background. Like my grandfather evidently had a dalliance with an otherworldly creature who came into our lives. Was it the grandfather or great grandfather? I think it was more than one gen, more than one. I think it's a couple generations back. But there was a strange preponderance in our family to have blue hair. And uh, we wondered forever what it was. And only recently did I discover that this was a connection to another whole world, another worldly being that showed up and became part of our family tree. Now, one night when I was out uh, hunting with my brother, uh, my brother fell to uh, a beast down by the riverside and his body disappeared. Nobody knew where he went. But before he disappeared, I heard the horns of what we call the wild ride. And they showed up and actually conscripted him into the wild ride. So my brother became a member of this dark, shadowy uh, group of hunters who go around hunting the unjust and bringing them to justice. And if you join the wild ride, you never die, you never grow older, but you are uh, contracted to be a member of this group that hunts the unjust. And uh, one time, you know, after I was dismissed by the tribe because of they thought I'd killed my brother. And so they persecuted me and, and drove me away. I came to know that he had joined the wild ride and that he was safe. When he came through with a black bow to present to me as a gift, and that gift of this amazing black bow it, it, I didn't think much of it until we became uh, joined, the black bow and I, and I've gained great archery skill with it. It's a very powerful bow against the, uh, the soldiering dead, we found out. Uh, and when we traveled through, I found that I had a connection with the air elementals and beings of the air because of my blue hair heritage. So it's become a really interesting thing. Now, when I was in Terra, I was a bounty hunter and, uh, and I was engaged in some unsavory business deals. So when this train robbery came up, I thought, yeah, I could get with that. So I joined the train robbery and became their uh, hired gun, essentially. But I had no idea it was going to lead to this incredible adventure. Okay, so I'm going to clarify a couple of things for anybody that's watching this video or recording later on um we're not in the world of earth known in our game as terra anymore we're in another world <clears throat> called era that's where our whole game is taking place in another world so these guys all signed up for your regular D, &D fantasy style adventure and then they ended up instead being in a kind of a gothic western which what did you think of that glenn you were, uh, you were, I don't think, I think you were the most surprised when all of a sudden it wasn't what you thought you were signing up for. Certainly not. No, as an inventor, I'm very scientific. And to have us magically transported to another dimension, another parallel universe was quite amazing and unbelievable to me. Okay, well, per Percy mentioned the wild ride or the wild hunt, right? Yeah. And so... This whole idea of this Terra and Era, two twin worlds that, that they've passed from one to the other. The whole idea is, is that Era is a world where all of the mythology that we take for granted on Earth 
uh, where all that mythology is actually true. And that mythology is, that's the source of it. It's true on this world of magic, a golden world of magic called Era. Um, and all of the legends that we have on Earth are trickle down from things that have actually happened on Era. And these guys are doing pretty good because they're trying to remember biographies that they, that they came up with two years ago. So I was pretty impressed. And I haven't forgotten. We have one more, and that's Thaddeus. And if you go on the website, you'll find out that Thaddeus' biography is complete. <laughs> that is very has, complete. So has go it ahead. been updated? No. So it's we've only we got the first thing. edition on. <laughs> There's only the first edition on. I, I, I have the corrected edition on a thumb drive. I have to go, and I'll get the text updated soon. We Actually, that reminds me. I think we should all go and have a look at those bio pages and just see if there's stuff on them that is right or wrong based on uh, what you guys uh, came up with, right? Just so that I can correct anything that's not right on our biographies. So go ahead, Thaddeus, take it away. <clears throat> My name is Thaddeus Leroy Poindexter. I was born in Williamsburg. Um, came from a very wealthy family, actually, uh, also related to the Abernathys of Atlanta. Uh, when I was 12 years old, um, civil war broke out and there was the Battle of Williamsburg and uh, my parents were murdered. And uh, to cover up the murder, the soldiers burned down the house. I managed to escape, uh, hid out in my old tree house for a while, uh, got from there and uh, I was basically on my own traveling the wilds when I was 12 years old. I got odd jobs here and there made my way to Atlanta to see my cousins, just in time to see their house burning. So uh, that didn't really work out. So back on the road again. By the time I was 18, I found my way into, um, oh, I can't even remember where it was. Uh, but I ended up going to uh, the university. I'd saved up some money. Um, Spent two years going to the University of uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, to get a medical degree. Ooh, a doctor. Yes. Doc and, Thaddeus. And so um, ever since then, I have been a traveling medical professional, having several adventures along the way. Um, oh, I was in Tombstone, Arizona at a very historical moment. Didn't agree with the doctor's diagnosis of, of uh, bullet angles, so he fired me. Uh, and then I ended up um, meeting with Mr. Alexium, and uh, he was. We set him up as my lab technician in the medical practice, uh, but we did some other jobs on the side. Uh, and then this infamous train robbery came came up, and uh, we decided. You know, people might get hurt, so there should be a physician nearby. Uh, and then we ended up in this strange world. So it had nothing to do with the money on the train. It was all just about, uh, you know, making sure keeping people safe. Well, indeed, I was trying to get everybody safe. We knew there was going to be explosives, so I was trying to move everybody from the one passenger carriage uh, to a farther one. So and some of us disagreed and didn't want to be moved and Even bothered it was that is. Very dangerous, Miss <laughs> Rose. I know. Um, that is where I met Miss Rose, who was a passenger aboard that train. I was indeed. Okay, well, this is something I want everybody to remember. Thaddeus is a con man. So how he, dare you, sir? He how talks dare you? Such a good game. He talks such a perfectly good, <laughs> reputable game, but he is a rogue. So yeah, he's his medical medical expertise has saved the butts of a lot of his uh, teammates uh, throughout all of the different escapades that they've been on. But at the same time, he's always <laughs> carrying his little knives and going stabby, stabby, stabby. So yeah. That is is he's perfect. He talks. So that was my father's fill filleting knives that I managed to keep. You know what? Home. I can't. I've got to find your other mini. He, we even have two minis for him. One for his character as as uh, <laughs> Mr. Tough Guy, and the other one for his character as in a suit as Mr. Proper Guy. 
Okay, um, so that's basically some of the background. These, this Motley crew all ended up in the same place at the same time. Lavinia was not part of the train robbers. She was riding the train uh, at the direction of her dead grandmother uh, at the time that it was robbed. And uh, the train was the Overland Flyer. This all happened in Wyoming. Uh, it's basically uh, kind of a takeoff on the whole hole in the wall gang thing. What a lot of people don't know is that actually hole in the wall was a notorious hideout, not just for one gang, but for many gangs, in fact. And uh, uh, I, I think I titled in the uh, one of the things we were writing, I think I called it the not so great train robbery. Because this was the whole start of the thing. They all started. We were all playing the first session. We're now into session one. The train robbery. They're all ready to go. They're all planning it. There's, there's, it's happening at night. And Josephine's up on the hill. And she's, she's being the lookout. And their dynamite man, Mr. Raven Alexium, is the one that's got to break in to the payroll car, right? What, what happened to the payroll car, Raven Alexian? Well, it blowed up. Oh, no. We've been attacked by a large feline. Larry, get off the table. Feline. Larry. Come here. Get off the table. For serious. <laughs> it's trying get to down. eat. Don't, don't eat, eat us in miniature. Don't eat the minis. <laughs> this is Larry the cat. This is, he will have his own his own camera soon on his own <laughs> tree. But go ahead. Go ahead, Raven. Feline what happened? Godzilla. Yes. Well, it blowed up real good. That is the train. The safe, however, didn't. And uh, we uh, we ended up, oh, if I remember correctly, being chased uh, terribly and rapidly down and away from that train. That we never, we actually were able to get a little bit of um, paper out of the train safe. I recall paper money. Yeah, paper money. Yep. And then uh, we, we, uh, we were we were no, set up. Oh, it was, it was, was newsprint. They fooled us. Yeah, they tricked us. Because it was a trap. It was a trap. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as you were robbing it, another train that came up behind, and there were uh, there was a posse on it, right? It was like a, like it was like a, like a hundred men or something. Yes, I made sure there were hundred men. There was. I was going to make sure that you. There was no way that you had the choice to fight, stand and fight. I was going to scare the shit out of you and make sure that you would have to run in the night as they chased you and. Eventually cornered you in um, uh, an mine. abandoned mine. That's right, an abandoned mine. Then we found our way down the mine shaft, uh, which led us um, after the uh, protagonist blew us blew up the mine behind us. We really only had one place to go, and that was the discovery of the portal that took us to the alternate uh, location. See, when these guys talk now, it's like they knew exactly what to do. But actually at the time, and you will see this in, <laughs> in future game sessions, there's a lot of, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Don't go there. Stay in the boat. Don't. We don't want to do this. Run away, run away, run away. <laughs> there's a lot of that that happens, isn't there, Raven? We do yeah, run away yeah. quite a bit. We yeah. run away all the time. <laughs> Especially <laughs> me. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. I mean, one of the times that you decided to stand to fight, uh, well, we'll get to that later on. I was just thinking of the owl women, but we'll get to that. There's, of course, a ton of history. You ended up in the crystal load mine, as it was called, and what did you find there? You were stuck because they dynamited the entrance, right? So you floundered around in the dark, and eventually you found something. What was it? We found what appeared to be a portal. A portal. Yes. Before that, though, we found some dead people. And like a map, and that's true. Yeah. yeah, we yeah we found the portal maker, if I remember correctly. We we don't know who it was. All we know is that there the was body was never identified, sir. So. so the game master knows it was the portal maker. But the, <laughs> the players never did catch. No, it. But, no but we, we know, know now. Now we know. Yes. Now, we know. Yeah, yeah. now you know. Let's get, get little little uh, oh. retroactive. <laughs> But yeah, we found the portal, and really? we decided to go through it, and uh, everything changed around us. The world became more golden and infused with this goldish glow. And so we, we were all under the impression that we weren't in Kansas anymore, and quite literally, we were in a different world. So it was intriguing and different. 
Do you remember the first thing that we saw when we looked up at the sky? Bunch of flying buffalo? Yeah, the flying buffalo. Was, and, that, a good, was that a good memory? Was and, that, did and, you think that was cool? Well, yeah. And then airships, and we were like, okay, obviously not in the United States anymore. Even though it looked the exact same. For the maps. The whole the, idea the behind, behind Era and Terra is that they are twin worlds. They have roughly the same continental geography, but of course, actually on the land itself. Whereas in this time, 1899, you know, you've got the Victorian era and you've got the Wild West. Uh, where they are now is much, much more wide open and primitive and a lot less civilization. And there's flying objects. And there's flying things. There are ships that fly. There are cities that float on clouds. There are animals that fly, buffalo and horses and all kinds of stuff. So there's an entire ecosystem uh, above you besides what's actually on the, the planes in front of you. No. I think there's even flying wolves, right? Very. Yeah. Well, we learned about the gems that had, um, some had special properties that were, um, what well, gave uh, the opposite of gravity. Fascinating discovery. Mm -hmm. The air light gems, which air uh, which allowed or air light clusters, which allowed the ships to levitate into the air. And we're still not sure of the, the exact mechanism, but we know that these air light clusters are very, very rare and very pricey. And if they break, the ship will come down. And air light gems are actually the currency in this world, right? The primary That's currency. Right. Yeah. They I mean there is gold as well and silver but air light is the most valuable of all elements so the whole idea behind era uh just to give uh the folks at home an idea is that era being a twin world of terra the difference is is that era has this magical element of aether about it that enables all of the magic on it and that also changes the world uh to be a golden world the, the, it's in the very air itself which is why the sky's got a golden tint. Everything in the everything has a little bit of golden light tint to it. Um, and so our party has been trooping around, finding air light crystals. You guys haven't uh, actually been on a flying ship yet, have you? No. Yes. Well, we have, yeah. but it was we, landed we on, on the ground. Felled. Oh, you a shipwreck, right? You're in a shipwreck. You found a shipwreck. Yeah, and um, yeah, but we. Uh, we did not figure out how to make it fly, although we did make a hot air balloon and flew over mountains. That's and right. Ended up crashing it. I forgot That's, that you made a hot air balloon did. at one point. We made point. a hot air balloon, and then when we when we saw the cops coming, we were like, <laughs> "Nope, nope, we're down. We're gonna yep. ground this ship and get the heck out of Dodge." The cops what By that, I think you mean like the, the, Yes. Yes. So, uh, the humanoids in this world, just like most fantasy worlds come in many different shapes and sizes and in this case the inhabitants of the sky the inhabitants the most of them that fly these giant these giant fl flying ships and the inhabitants of these cities that are floating up the clouds you've heard from people that you've met on the ground that they are in fact giants mm -hmm. the ones in the golden disc cities floating on the clouds mm -hmm. are more or less good guys and the ones that uh, come in their Viking ships are slavers, right? Uh, and uh, you you fought one. You fought one giant slaver at one time, didn't you? We, that was when we found the grounded ship that was in the middle of the desert. And it had something around it, a protective spell. And then when we penetrated the protective spell area, it summoned this That's right. this giant who protected the skeleton, frost it? giant i think or, or a golem or, even was a golem oh. yeah or a, a skeleton okay so i'll tell you what we're going to wrap it up there for this session we will pick up our backstory uh the next wednesday night that we play and we'll do a little bit more picking up at this point in the review just to give people a chance to catch up on on what the story was and where it went but right now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, stop in a moment. We're going to take a break for 10 minutes and then we are going to come back and we are going to play the game at the point in our story 
that we that all of the players are at right now and the rest of the, this evening is going to be us playing our live present game so uh stick around hopefully you'll come back and see us and if this is a recording you're watching uh the subsequent recordings to this are all going to be on our uh, youtube channel all right perfect